On Friday, we defined kinematics, our first unit, as the study of motion without regard to what? Forces, yeah, it's forces that cause motion. Forces are push or pull. And we're going to study forces in great detail in our next unit. But this unit is just the motion itself, nothing to do with what caused the motion. It's motion, but no forces. Now, in order to study kinematics and our next unit, which is forces, we need to know the difference between a vector and a scalar. Does anybody remember the difference between a vector and a scalar right now? Yeah. Yeah. A vector has both magnitude and direction, whereas a scalar has only magnitude. If you're anything like me, learning something for the first time or the second time or the 50th time, like I, I mix things like this up all the time. I don't mix vector and scalar up because I've seen this a million times. Right? But if I see this for the first, I don't know, 20 times, I'm probably going to still mix up vector and scalar. I'm going to remember that one of them has only magnitude, and I'm going to remember that one of them has both magnitude and direction, but I'm going to mix up which is which. I'm going to have like a 50-50 chance. So, what's our way of remembering which one is which? What's our way of distinguishing between a vector and a scalar? Years ago, I was at a grocery store with my wife, grocery shopping. I'm not a big fan of grocery shopping, but when I go grocery shopping, I like to just do things to entertain myself. Like sometimes I just kind of watch people and see how odd people are, which may to you sound kind of odd in itself. People are probably watching me like, what's he doing? Um, but sometimes I like read labels. This one day at No Frills, it was, this is how long ago it was. It wasn't even No Frills. It was called Extra Foods at the time. I'm in the cereal aisle, and I'm like, I start reading labels in the cereal aisle to just kill time while my wife is grocery shopping. So I'm reading labels, and then I see this vector meal replacement. You ever had vector cereal, vector meal replacement? Is it good? I've never eaten it. Never had it. They call it a meal replacement. They don't call it a cereal. They call it a meal replacement. But it's in the cereal aisle. Yeah, yeah it's kind of old. <laughs> It expired, this, this will tell you how long ago it was. It expired November 13th, 2003. Oh, you drop it, that thing will shatter. <laughs> I don't think it really goes bad. It just kind of goes, doesn't taste good. Yeah. But, so I'm, I'm, reading the, I'm reading these labels and I come to vector meal replacement. And I'm like, well, what's the difference between a meal replacement and a cereal? It's in the same aisle. Like, is there really any difference or is it marketing? Well, I read the labels, and for the most part, it's marketing. Like, there's hardly any difference nutritionally between vector cereal and, and cornflakes or whatever else. It's basically um, some kind of grain and sugar, right? like, like, any other, like any other cereal. But that's not what struck me about it. When I read the box of vector cereal, vector, sorry, vector meal replacements, Compared to other cereals, what I noticed was that other cereals had, well, of course, they had the size of the box. They have to, by law, say 400 grams, in this case, or 375 grams, or 575 grams, or whatever the case may be. They have to have the magnitude. They have to have the size of the box. They all have that. They all have magnitude. But vector cereal is the only one, and you can check this out yourself. Go to the cereal aisle, read all the labels. They all have magnitude. Only vector has, only vector has, read that. What? Read that right there. Place 59. No. Direction, Yellow. Uh, direction directions, for use. directions for use. So if you're not sure how to use this, they give you directions. Now, you could probably use those same directions for cornflakes as well. I'm, get, I'm thinking. Okay, but this is the only one. Let me read them to you, okay? Let's see if you can predict the next step. Directions for use. Place 55 grams of vector in a bowl. Like, that's pretty specific. Like, you put, you, you put 53 grams in there, like you mess up everything. Okay, 
Because that's not the directions. Guess what it says next? Add 200 mils of milk. Just in case you didn't know what to do next after you pour the cereal in a bowl. What do you do next? I don't know. It doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't say. It doesn't say what to do next. Because it didn't have it on the directions. That's why. Nope. Nope. Didn't know what to do after I poured the poured the milk in. Um, guys, this is not the kind of direction we're talking about with with a with a vector versus a scalar, right? We're talking about north, south, east, west, right, left, up, down, um, forward, backwards, right? This is not the same thing. But this is the way to remember which one is which. Vector serial has magnitude, 400 grams, and direction on the side of the box. Whereas all the other serials, which are we'll call scalar serial, has only magnitude. Don't, if I give you a quiz that says, give me an example of a vector, don't say vector serial. Because it's not. It's our way of remembering the difference between a vector and a scalar. Okay, scalar has both only magnitude, and the vector has both magnitude and direction. Got it? All right. Friday, we finished up with defining distance, providing the symbol units for distance, and identifying it as a vector or scalar. Speaking of vector and scalar, do you remember what distance was? Was it a vector or was it a scalar? Yeah, it's a scalar. There is no direction associated with distance. We defined distance on Friday as how far an object travels. How far it travels or how far it has traveled. You guys remember the symbol for distance? There's two of them that we can use, but one that we use most often. You can say triangle and then a D, absolutely. The triangle means, it's a Greek letter, delta, and that means change. And usually that's the one we use because when we're talking about a distance, how far something's traveled, it's inferring a change. You were over there, now you're over here, things have changed, right? So that's why we usually say delta D. But sometimes, sometimes, we just say D. Both of those symbols are used, but delta D is far and away used more often. Units? Well, there's a lot of units that you can use, but one that's the most common one, or at least one that's always right. The go-to units, the if in doubt, use this units. Meters, yeah. Sometimes we use kilometers. Sometimes we use miles. Sometimes we use centimeters or inches. But meters always works. If in doubt, convert it to meters, because that always works. All right. Now let's define a new term now that we haven't seen before, position. Now, as you're defining these terms, like don't look down at your fill-in-a-blank stuff here, okay? Like just give me your ideas. And if it happens to be wrong, oh well. Okay, give me your ideas as opposed to the definitions that I've got in those fill-in-the-blank notes for you, okay? What do you think of when you hear the word position? Like what what if I said, what's your position? Like, what does that mean to you? Yeah? Like where you are. Yeah. Yeah, it means where you are. Where an object is. Where something is at a particular moment in time. It's location. Now, the symbol for position, you're not going to know this. So I'm just going to give it to you. It is a D, not delta D. It is a D, but we can't just use D because we already use D for distance. It's a D with a little half arrow over top of it. That little half arrow is a symbol that signifies that we've got a vector here. Every other vector quantity is something with a half arrow over top of it. Every scalar quantity is something with no half arrow over top of it. What do you think the units should be for position? Sorry? It is a vector, yeah. It is a vector, but what should the units be? Kilometers, miles, meters. Sometimes we can use kilometers and miles, but we can always use meters. 
So position is where something is, and that includes direction because it's a vector quantity. Like it doesn't do any good to describe your position without a direction or a reference point, right? Like if I phone you up and say, where are you? And you say, oh, 13 kilometers. What does that mean? I'm 13 kilometers. Oh, I'm 13 kilometers north of Okotoks on the highway, right? Okay, that makes a lot more sense to describe your position by a reference point from Okotoks, but also a direction as well, north of Okotoks. Displacement, I'll just define this for you as well. Displacement is defined as the change in position of an object. The change in position. What do you think the symbol is? Oh, you can so nail this. Gotta give it a little thought though. The change in position. Think about that definition. Staring you in the face. Yeah. Yes. Position is D with the arrow over it. The change in position is delta D with the arrow over it. The units, of course, are going to be meters. And because we're dealing with a change in a vector, we're going to be dealing with a vector here. Position and displacement, the same thing, except one has a direction, one has a one doesn't. Sometimes, but sometimes they're not. Let me explain that. Let's say that this is the front of the room right here. My position right now is this spot right here, which is two meters from the front of the room. Okay, that's my position. That's where I am. Well, a few seconds later, I'm going to be over here, which is six meters from the front of the room. What's my position now? Six meters. Let's say this is... Uh, That would be six meters to the south of the front of the room, right? That makes sense? Six meters to the south of the front of the room. I was two meters from the front of the room, two meters to the south of the front of the room. What's my displacement? When I walked from here down to here, what's my displacement? What's my change in position? Yeah, uh, almost. Almost four meters south, right? Because displacement's a vector. I walked four meters south. My position was two meters south. Now it's six meters south. My displacement, my change in position is four meters south. What's my distance traveled? If you're driving your car, well, that would be a short car ride. But if you're driving your car, what does the odometer on your car read? What's the number read? The distance traveled. Four meters, right? Distance was four meters. Displacement was four meters to the south. What's the difference? Well, we put a direction on displacement and we didn't on distance, right? Good? Make sense? Okay. Okay, what about this one? What about this one? Let's say we get the same scenario here. Let's say we go another one meter. So we're walking from, he, from here to here. What was my initial position? Two meters to the south. What was my final position? Seven meters to the south. What's my displacement? No. Nope. What's my displacement? My change in position? Five meters to the south. Good, right? What's my distance? Five meters, right? No direction. So distance and displacement, same number, right? Same number, displacement just has direction. Okay, one last one. Let's say this time I go from, let's say I go from here to here and then back to here. 
what's my initial position? Two meters to the south, right? What's my final position? Six meters to the south. What's my displacement, which is defined as a change in position? Four meters to the south. doesn't matter how I got there. Right? I went from two to, si to uh, seven back to six. My displacement is four meters to the south, right? Because it's final position minus initial position, right? What's my distance traveled? I went from two to seven, which is five. And then I went back to six, which traveled another one. My, dis my displacement was four meters to the south. My distance traveled was, somebody said over here, six meters. Why is distance different than displacement this time? Yes, I changed direction. If you keep going in the same direction, distance and displacement will be the same number, just that displacement will have a direction. If you switch directions, distance and displacement will be two different numbers. Does that make sense? Get that? Keep going in the same direction. These two will be same number. One will have direction. If you switch direction, then all of a sudden they become different numbers. All right. What if we want to find the displacement? There's two ways to find displacement depending, depending upon what we have. Number one, we can find the total displacement by subtracting positions. Final position minus the initial position. Remember what position is, where something is. I am two meters to the south of the whiteboard. I am 35 kilometers south of Calgary. I am 15 kilometers north of High River. I am 12 kilometers west of whatever. That's where I am. That's my position. It's where I am or where I was. If I'm given two different positions, then I've got to subtract them to find displacement. But if, on the other hand, you're given two different displacements. I walked 10 meters to the west, and then I walked two meters to the south, two, sorry, to the uh, west. 10 meters to the west, then, 10, then two meters to the west. I don't subtract those. If I'm given displacements, I add them. Think about that. If I walk 10 to the west and then two to the west, how far did I walk? 12. You wouldn't subtract those, right? You subtract positions you add displacements. Maybe you have more than two displacements. I walked 10 meters to the west. Then I walked two meters to the west. Then I walked another five meters to the west. Add them up. If I was at 10 meters to the west, and then I was at two meters to the west, I would subtract those. Add one little more little thing in here, and then we'll do an example, right? These vector quantities, position displacement, and lots more vectors that you're going to see this year, we will make vector quantities positive they're positive if they are north. or east, or up, or down, or forward, they're negative if we are, I guess, yep, south, south. yep, yep. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake here. Shouldn't have been down. 
North, east, up, de um, down for negative, backward, Assigning a sign to them, positive or negative, just means it makes the math easier. Like, we could put words in there. We could say, oh, we're, we're combining six meters to the west with three meters to the east. Well, we could do that. But if we're doing math, it's easier to have signs than it is to have words. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make the word north positive and the word south negative. And then it's just adding positive and negative numbers together instead of trying to add words together, which can become pretty tricky. All right, let's do our first example. This is in your notes package. It says you walk 20 meters east, then you walk 10 meters to the west. Ask yourself this question. Are these positions or are these displacements? Remember, position is where I am or where I was. I walked 20 meters. Is that where I am or where I was? Are those positions or displacements? Those are displacements, right? Who knows where I am? I'm in Vancouver. I could have walked 20 meters east, then 10 meters west. This question would be no different if I was in Vancouver walking these versus in Toronto walking these, right? doesn't make any difference. We have no idea where I am or where I was. We only know what my position changed by. These are displacements. We're going to say displacement 1 is equal to positive 20 meters. We're going to say displacement 2 is equal to negative 10 meters. Why did I make it negative? Because it's west. Makes the math easier if I put in signs instead of the words. Positive 20 east, negative, 20, negative 10 uh, to the west. Now, if I want to find, let's find displacement first, okay? Displacement, if I have other displacements, I add them. Remember, if I have positions, I subtract, but I add displacements. D1 is 20 meters plus negative 10 meters. Add those together and we get... Negative 10 meters. Oh, what is this? My displacement is 10 meters. What do you think those brackets are for? What does negative 10 mean? Yeah. Uh, sorry, it should be positive 10, actually. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Actually, and I just finished telling you it was easier to add signs than it was to add words, right? been a long day. Cut me some slack, okay? Thank you for pointing that out. It is positive 10, you're right, which means my final answer, being positive, means it's to the east, right? If I made east positive and west negative, then positive 10 means it's 10 meters to the east. What's my distance traveled? Notice the difference here, right? No vector sign over top of it. What's my first distance? 20. What's my second distance? 10. Not negative 10, right? We're talking about a scalar here, no direction. My distance traveled is 30 meters. Make sense? So a couple things you got to remember here. One is, uh, listen, we got a difference between distance and displacement. Why are they different numbers? Aren't they the same number? We went east, and then we went west. When we switch directions, those two numbers will be different. Right? If we went, if we went 10, 20 meters east and then 10 meters east, they'd both be 30. But when we switch directions, they become different numbers. The second thing you got to remember here is why we add them together here instead of subtracting. We add displacements, we subtract positions. Got it? Okay, I got another example for you here. This one says your initial position is 100 meters south and your final position is 
150 north. Listen, these indicate where I am. Should we actually say where I am relative to something? I'm 100 meters south of Okotoks. Whatever, right? It should say a frame of reference there. But these are, pos these are where I am or where I was. These are positions. How do you find displacement with positions? My initial position is negative 100. My final position is positive 150. To find the displacement, I'm going to say df minus di. Remember, add displacements, subtract positions. Oh, watch out here. Watch out for this. 150 minus 100 is what? What is it? So I heard somebody whisper it. What is it? 50? Oh, no. Well, 150 minus 100 is 50, but that's the wrong answer because I've written it down wrong. What did I miss when I wrote that down? On purpose, but... Yeah, it's, it's not 150 minus 100. It's 150 minus negative 100. And when I subtract 100, negative 100 from 150, what do I get? Plus 250. My change in position is plus 250, which is 250 meters to the north because positive is north. What's my displacement? Oh, it's the same thing, because that's how we define displacement. It's 250 meters to the north. So in the first question, we added displacements to get displacement. And in the second question, we subtracted positions to get displacement. We're going to work on worksheet number one right now. There's four questions that are up on the board right now. So I'd like you to take a look at those first four questions please, worksheet number one. Remember, ask yourself, do I have position or do I have displacement? Is this where something is or is it how far something's gone? And then remember those signs as well, the positives and the negatives as well. Let's have a look at two and three here, all right? Number two says a man walks 20 meters north, then 50 meters south, then 100 meters north. Well, this man has walked 20 meters north. Do we know where he is or where he was? No, we don't. Like, where is, like, seriously, where is this man? This man could be in Calgary, or this man could be in Beijing. We have no idea, right? All we know is that this man walked 20 meters north, and then he walked 50 meters south, and then he walked 100 meters north, which he could have done in any place in the entire world. We have no idea where he is. These are not positions. They are displacements. They are his change in positions. Okay, does that make sense? This is, where, this is how far he's gone. All right, so we're going to say here, um, let's make a north positive, south negative. Uh, my first displacement is 20 meters, plus 20 meters. My second displacement is negative 50 meters, and my third displacement is positive 100 meters. I have displacements. What do I do with displacements? Add or subtract. Add displacements, subtract positions. So we're going to say delta D1 plus delta D2 plus delta D3. We're going to say uh, 20 plus 20 plus negative 50 plus 100. What does that add, to, add up to give me? Plus 70 meters. What does the plus mean? North. So what's his total displacement? is 70 meters to the north. Good? Okay, what about his distance travel? Distance is D1 plus D2 plus D3 as well. Think you're going to get the same number? Think you're going to get 70? How come? Why is it not going to be the same number? Quick. Because we change direction. When we change direction, we get different numbers for distance of displacement, right? When we keep the same direction, the number will be the same. 
So here we're going to say D1. What's D1? Well, it's going to be 20 meters. What's D2? What's distance 2? Is it a negative 50? No, that's displacement 2. What's distance 2? 50. Just positive 50. D3 is a positive 100. So we add these up, and we get 170 meters. Does that make sense? What does that positive mean? Trick question. What does that positive mean? Positive 170. It means nothing because distance is a scalar, and there's no, there's no possibility of a negative with distance, right? Does that make sense? So the first thing in this question you had to spot was the fact that we were given displacements, not positions. Okay, like, ask yourself, do I know where he is? Do I know where this person is? No, we don't. Therefore, they've got to be displacements. Therefore, we've got to add them up. The second thing you've got to catch in this one is that um, we're looking for distance. We do the same thing, but we don't pay any attention to the science. The negatives are irrelevant for us. Okay, let's do number three. Boy runs 400 meters around the track, then another 400 meters around the track. Back where he started. What's the boy's distance traveled? 800 meters. Distance is 400 plus 400. Wait a second. He's traveling around this track. He's changing direction, right? Why doesn't it matter that he changed direction? Because distance is a scalar, right? Now, what's his displacement? Here's the real trick question here. What's his displacement? I didn't even show any work for this one. What is it? Yeah, it's zero. How is it zero? Why is it zero? Yeah, yeah. Where did he start? At the beginning. Where did he finish? At the beginning. So his displacement is, is zero, right? Make sense? I drove this uh, this weekend on Friday afternoon. I drove out to uh, Creston, BC. It's 500 kilometers to, to Creston, BC. And then I drove 500 on Sunday. I drove 500 kilometers back. What was my distance travel? 1,000 kilometers. What was my displacement? Zero, right? Zero, because my position ended up staying the same. Make sense? Okay, try to take a look now at uh, questions five. Actually, I'll leave four up because maybe you didn't quite finish number four. Try to do up to number seven now. Okay, number four, if you haven't finished it, move on to number five if you have. Okay, let's have a look at number five now. It says a woman begins driving her car 200 meters, two, sorry, 200 kilometers north of Calgary. Sometime later, the woman and the car are 100 kilometers north of Calgary. Okay, ask yourself for these numbers this question. Is this where she is or was? Is this where she is or was? Who says that this 200 kilometers north of Calgary is a position? This is where she is or this is where she was. Yeah, that's right. This isn't how far she's gone. We know exactly where she is. Right? Remember that those last questions, like guy could have been in Australia, guy could have been in, in none of it. We had no idea where he was, right? All we knew is what his change in position was. Here we know exactly where this woman is. She's 200 kilometers north of Calgary, and then she's 100 kilometers north of Calgary. These are positions. So we're going to say D initial, DI, is equal to 200 kilometers. We'll make north positive. DI is 200 kilometers. DF is going to be equal to 100 kilometers, positive 100 kilometers. We're looking for... Well, first, let's get B first, actually, the distance, the displacement here. The displacement this time is, is it add or subtract? Add displacements, subtract positions. Add displacements, subtract positions. So we're going to say DF minus DI. Don't forget the vector signs. See, don't take shortcuts. Skipping vector signs and so on. DF is 100 minus 200. What does that give me? Gives me negative 100, right? 
What does that mean? What does the negative mean? It's south, right? That makes sense. Sense. If I start 200 kilometers north of Calgary and I end up 100 kilometers north of Calgary, I must have been driving south, right? There's my displacement. What about our distance traveled, huh? Did she change directions here? She's driving south the whole time, right? So what do we know about the distance? If we don't change direction, the distance is the same as the displacement, right? Except minus the direction. So we're just going to say her distance here is 100 meters. That's the easiest way to find it. Sorry, 100 kilometers it would be. Okay, 100 kilometers south? No, no, no. That would be displacement. The distance is 100 kilometers. What does the odometer on the car read? 100 kilometers. Okay. It doesn't say south. Good? Okay, keep going. Please. Number seven now. Boy walks 100 meters north, then 200 meters east. Uh-oh. What's different about this one? Yeah. Yeah, it's not going north and then south. It's going north and then east. So we've got like a, ooh, how do we do that? Well, isn't north positive and east positive? Mm -hmm. Then we got south, then we got west, then we got south again. Well, listen, the distance is actually pretty, pretty straightforward to find here. Um, are these positions or displacements? Do we know where this boy is or was? Do we? No, we don't. This boy could be in Calgary. This boy could be in England. Bosnia? It could be, I guess, yeah. We have no idea where he is. All we know is that he walked 100 meters north and 200 meters east and so on. If we want to find the distance traveled, let's just add these up. 100 meters to the north plus 200 meters to the east plus 50 meters to the south plus 200 meters to the west plus 50 meters to the south. We don't pay any attention to direction whatsoever. When we add those up, we get what? 300, 350, 550, 600 meters? Is that right? There's his distance traveled. If he's wearing his uh, smart bit or uh, uh, his uh, Fitbit, it's going to show that he walked 600 meters. Doesn't matter which way he went, right? Does it tell us where he is? No, it doesn't. Just how far he's walked. Okay, what about the boy's displacement? Well, let me tell you in this question that right now you can only do this question because the numbers are as they are. If I changed one number to 201 meter east, you could not do this question. Not yet. You, you, there'll be a time when we can, but right now we couldn't. But this one works out. Why are we able to do this question right now? Yeah, because everything cancels, right? 100 meters north, uh, oh, 50 meters south, and then another 50 meters south, they cancel. And then we had, well, what? 200 east and 200 west, they cancel. So where do I end up? Back where I started. Zero meters. All right? Yeah, remember, you couldn't do a question like this if it wasn't zero right now. Distance doesn't have to be, but displacement has to be zero. Okay, you got two more questions. Questions eight and nine. They're tricky ones. Okay, eight and nine are tough ones. See what you can do with them. We'll take a look at one of those before the end of class today, whichever one you want. And then we'll wrap it up. Okay, up here. Okay, take a look at number eight now. It says, a man begins driving his car 50 kilometers east of Banff, while later he's 300. Well, even, even later, the man in his car 400 kilometers east of Banff. Are these positions or displacements that we're given? This is, like, this is 50 kilometers east of Banff. This pinpoints exactly where this man is or was, right? These are positions. We're going to say, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of calling it, di in position i in position final because there's three of them i'm going to call it d1 d2 and d3 that's okay d1 is east is positive we're going to say 50 meters 50 kilometers d2 is 300 kilometers and we're going to say d3 is 400 kilometers 
If I want to find displacement given positions, what do I do? Add positions or subtract positions? Add displacements, subtract positions. So let's say delta D is DF minus DI, or in this case, DF is D, D3, D3 minus D1, 400 minus 50. Does that make sense? Okay, what about the distance? This one's trickier. The distance traveled, we traveled like two different distances, right? We went from 50 to 300, we traveled 250 meters, kilometers. And then we went from 300 to 400, we traveled another 100. You want to find the total distance traveled? 250 plus 100 gives me 350. Guys, hold on for a second before we pack up. We got 350 kilometers. Listen, why are they the same number? They're not always the same number. Why are they the same number? Yeah, we didn't switch direction. In question number nine, almost the same question as number eight, except we switched direction. So you're going to find the logic is exactly the same, but you're going to find the displacement and the distance are two different numbers when we switch directions.